Today's scripture reading is from the book of Jonah, so pay careful attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying here. God had called on Jonah a number of times, and Jonah had responded positively to his role as a prophet. But when God said this time, go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against them because their wickedness has come up to me, Jonah decided this time to go the other way. He went to the port of Joppa in the eastern Mediterranean and booked passage on a ship to Tarshish. Now, Tarshish was located on the Iberian Peninsula near the Straits of Gibraltar, just about as far away from Nineveh as he could get. As he sailed there, a violent storm surrounded the ship, and the captain and the sailors, when they found out that it was Jonah who was running from his god, threw him overboard. The seas calmed immediately. God commissioned a big fish to come and he swallowed Jonah. And for three days and three nights, Jonah prayed for mercy and forgiveness and pledged his allegiance to God. God told the fish to spew Jonah out on dry land and he did. Then God said, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and spread the word that I will give you. And so Jonah walked about 500 miles to Nineveh, and when he got to Nineveh, he spread the word that in 40 days, Nineveh would be destroyed. Now the Ninevites, including their king, believed God and believed the word of Jonah. They all donned sackcloth, they fasted, they sat in ashes, and most importantly, they turned from their wicked ways. When God had seen that they turned from their evil ways, he changed his mind and didn't destroy the city. Jonah was very displeased. He was angry, and he prayed to God, and he said, Oh Lord, this is what I said when I was in my own community. This is why I went to Tarshish in the beginning. For you are a gracious God, full of mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and willing to relent from punishing. Oh Lord, please take my life from me, For it is better for me to die than to live. And God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about Nineveh? Well, Jonah got up, went out of the city, sat down east of the city, built a booth for himself, sat in the shade to watch and see what would happen to the city. Now God appointed a bush, a castor oil plant, and it came up over Jonah and shaded him and saved him from his discomfort. Jonah was very happy for the bush. When dawn came, God appointed a worm, and the worm attacked the plant, and the plant withered. When dawn came, when the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the wind beat down on Jonah's head and made him faint, and he asked that he die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. And God said, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And Jonah said, yes, angry enough to die. And God said, you're concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and did not grow. It came into being in a night 
and perished in a night. Should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, with 120,000 people who don't know their right hand from their left hand, as well as cattle and many other animals? You see, Jonah and the Israelites enjoyed the special mercy that God gave them. But for their enemies, they only wanted God's wrath. And God delivered the message that He didn't want death for wrongdoers. He wanted them to change their evil ways and live. Word of God, Word of life. I didn't want to go to Nineveh. Truth be told, I'd rather go somewhere, anywhere else. I hated those people. They destroyed our country, married our women, raped our daughters, ended our culture. My father, Amittai, hated them more than I did. Do you know what it's like to harbor a grudge, a hatred, for 300 years? I hated the Ninevites. I don't know why God sent them, me to them. I asked him that a hundred times. God had sent me to strange places and different, difficult people, but none stranger and more difficult than Nineveh. That man just told you that I'd tried anything not to go. Tarshish was in the exact opposite direction, and yet it wasn't far enough away. preach a message of repentance to my mortal enemies? I knew if I did that, those bastards would repent. And I was afraid that if they repented, God would too. I didn't want them to be forgiven. I wanted them to be fried. I wanted God to crush them the way they crushed us. But God repented, and I couldn't stand it. I went out underneath that castor oil plant, and I was pouting. I was angry. I had come face to face with a God whose mercy was broader than mine, bigger than I wanted it to be. It's okay for God to love me, but them? Later I discovered that that's why he sent me there. Nineveh was the place that I went to where I came face to face, maybe for the first time, with how radical the grace of God was. Where's your Nineveh? It could be a person, a place, a relationship. Ninevehs are different for all of us. Nineveh is where God sends us to experience and to share grace. 
His grace for all of His creation. Looking back, I realized my life would never have been complete if I hadn't gone. Maybe the same thing can be said for you, too. Oh, one more thing. It wasn't just the Ninevites who repented. It wasn't just God who repented. I repented. It took me longer than it did them. But the real miracle of Nineveh is what happened to me. I began to see them as God saw them. Yeah. I'm still angry for 2,400 years. But somehow, with that anger, there has come acceptance, forgiveness, maybe even some kind of some kind of love. I had to ask myself this question. If they were worthy of God's forgiveness, weren't they worthy of mine? If God had the power to forgive them, maybe, maybe God had the power to help me forgive them too. I didn't want to go to Nineveh. But I can't imagine my life if I hadn't gone. Maybe, maybe I'm still there. Maybe once you go to Nineveh and experience the grace of God, maybe somehow you never leave. Maybe, maybe Nineveh sticks with you, changes your life, wherever you go. It did for me. I wish the same for you.